Hey everyone, uh, today's video is not going to have a whole lot of structure to it. Uh, it's going to be related to the water heater video I just put out last weekend. I would recommend you just go watch that first. And then if you're trying to make your own or you just kind of enjoy watching people tinker kind of aimlessly, I would watch this video. There's not going to be a whole lot of structure. I just kind of want to highlight some things I came across as I was building this thing. But it's not like, you know, for the finished product, just go watch the other video. That's all I can say about that. I'm gonna start this video by basically showing what was the intro to what I originally thought this video would be. I thought I would just kind of make this thing in a day, run some tests on it in the shop, and then call that it, you know, later down the line, build another version, etc. But it actually, one thing led to the another, and eventually I just ended up building a version that I put in my van, tested it out for a few trips, and then finally put out that video last weekend. So um, I'm gonna play the original intro I had filmed for what I thought this whole video was gonna be, uh, just to kind of, show you guys where I started with this whole idea and then we're just gonna basically show some footage and I'm gonna give a little voiceover where needed to uh, certain things that happened as, I, as the whole thing was coming together. Um, so this is the product that I'm excited about and this is a 12 volt heating element, um, 200 watt power input. And I hope it creates uh, a hot water heater that I've been sort of toying with in my head for a while now. So I think a lot of kind of camper van specific water heaters seem sort of like a relic of like living in a house and then trying to apply that kind of technology to a van use. So I think in a house, you basically have like infinite water, infinite power or like fuel source and then infinite space. And I think in a van, all three of those things are like super finite. Like, you know, when you think about your behavior in the van, you're always trying to conserve electricity. Um, any extra space you can have in your van for storage is great. And then all your water usage is super finite. Like no one leaves the faucet running when you're washing dishes, when you take showers, you just like wet your hair a bit. You know, everything is all about conservation. So I think if you like go down the list of like all the available like hot water heaters right now, they all suck basically for one reason or another. All of these things I think are sort of relics of household living. So this heater that I've envisioned is being 200 watts and uh, 12 volt, you can just like fuse this through a regular like ATC fuse with like standard wire gauge. You don't need to run some crazy large fuse for like a 700 watt heater, which I've seen some of the DC units. And I want it to be quite small. Like literally we're gonna take PVC of this size. We're gonna build a little chamber that fits over this element. We're gonna pump water through here and it will be small enough that you could like literally mount it to the bottom of your countertop so that when the water is heated, you don't have to wait for the hot water to arrive. It will be right below the countertop Really quickly, this heating element I'm showing here, this is a 200 watt, 12 volt unit from Missouri Wind and Sun. I ended up having a bunch of frustrations with this company and this heating element ends up not working out for this application. But that big kind of silver canister on it is a thermostat, which I kind of hoped would just like integrate the whole system together, but it does not end up working out as we'll soon see in this video. Oh yeah, one more thing I will say is this is gonna be a PVC prototype today. I think if this works well, I'll probably get the local metal shop to weld me up like a little stainless steel, a little chamber there. I looked at building this out of copper, but the kind of reductions you need to go from like a one and a half or two inch copper pipe down to the threads you need on each end, um, it was just kind of convoluted. So I think actually getting a little custom assembly welded would be the way to go. Anyways, let's get started with that. So making the PVC canister is pretty basic. I just got a couple of quick things to point out about this version of it that I made. Unfortunately, with this coupling here, um, you know, we're just, even if we press this in all the way, we're sort of losing almost half the length of the heater. So I think I'm gonna kind of butcher this whole system. I think I will cut this fitting down and I'll cut as much of this off as possible and then essentially force them together. So. Let's see how this works out. So this is one thing that was a little annoying when I was playing around with this earlier. Uh, the online says that this is a one inch NPT thread. Um, splitting hairs here, but NPT, the T stands for taper. I'm quite confident. And uh, this is most definitely just a straight thread. So it doesn't register very well into these PVC fittings, but I think we can get it sealed enough for today's application. So, all right, I'm gonna cut off as much of this as I can. And then uh, hopefully it still works well enough for our application. So I was wrong there. The T in MPT does stand for thread nowadays, but it implies that it's gonna be a tapered fitting or a tapered thread pattern. And this is definitely a straight fitting. 
But regardless, you can see here on the bench what the little cutoff T fitting looked like after I cut it, and then the rest of the assembly is pretty basic. But as I waited for the glue to set, I went ahead and powered up that heating element. Oh, it's only drawing eight and a half amps. That seems a little lower than I expected. It's getting warm. Huh. Well, that only seems like about 100 watts. Hmm. Let's double check that. Let's see. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Well, that's a little weird. I guess we'll tie it in some water first, but yeah, only seems to be drawing about eight amps on the bench. So this was the start of my frustration with this heating element. I could never get someone at the company to just answer the question if it's actually designed to run straight off a solar panel that's providing like 18 to 20 volts because some of the language in the description kind of implies that. No one could tell me whether or not I should see 200 watts of consumption at 12 volts. So I don't actually know if this was a faulty unit or if it was designed to work like this, but it just wasn't clearly stated on the website. Okay. So now as that dries, we'll uh, go set up the rest of the water experiment. We'll figure out how to drip water slowly. Okay, so this is the experiment we've kind of getting set up here. Um, this is a water tank I've had bouncing around for a few years. We're gonna fill it with water. We're gonna take this guy, once the heat element is in here, screw it on like this. So then when we, whoops, tilt this over, we'll have that on the outlet side here. I've got a little valve with the temperature sensor that I've stabbed in it. And then we'll just be able to open this valve and kind of let water dribble out. And then I've got a scale down here with a bucket. And then, so we got a clock basically for time. We'll be able to measure the amount of ounces that are going into our water bucket. And then we've got basically our power supply here. When the amps show more than zero, we know the heating element is on. And when it shows zero, we know it's off. And we'll take some initial water measurements, but I think it's gonna be right around freezing. So then once we start kind of regulating it, we'll see, you know, I'm kind of interested to see once this fills with fresh water, how long that takes to actually come up to temperature. And then as I start cycling it, what kind of temperature we can get on the outflow side based on what, uh, what, how much water is coming through here. Blah. All right, tongue twisted. Well, that's pretty disappointing. It uh, appears that in order to push 200 watts, I think you'd have to uh, be pulling about 18 volts. So it's like straight off a solar panel, but that's just never gonna work in a van. Okay, that's the end of this trial. I gotta email the manufacturer. Maybe there's something fucked up with it, but I think it's supposed to be a... All right, it's a few weeks later now. Um, time flies. Pretty disappointed customer service here. No one answered my questions about the technical specs if this was working how I expected. And when I asked to return it, I just got a short thing saying, log into your account. I never created an account and I verified I didn't have one by entering my email and it said, if you have an account, we'll reset your password. So no account, can't get a hold of anyone. So now I have this nice fancy $100 phallic thing to lay around the shop. 
But I've sort of bought some more things that are kind of the way I originally kind of envisioned I would do this whole thing. Um, these are just like the cheap heaters you can get. This one's about 30 bucks. Um, heating element. I guess what I did learn about that model is that 100 watts uh, just wasn't quite enough. I was getting about a nine degree temperature increase in the water. So this is a 300 watt unit. If we could get 27, 30 degrees, that would be exactly what I'm looking for. Um, then I've got this little dinky temperature controller. This is a nice Amazon cheapo. We'll see how well it works. It has a little temperature probe. Suppose you can program it to kick on and off at different temperatures. And then just to kind of help the way that this is all displayed and I can kind of track the temperature behavior. I just bought this little double temperature sensor we'll be wiring up. Supposedly it reads from two temperature probes. So we'll install one before the heating kind of block and install one after. And then that should make it a lot easier to figure out what exactly is going on. All right, here's our new experiment. Um, actually, we got to hook up our leads, but we're going to assume that's going to work fine. Fortunately, we got a frame rate sampling issue. This is a little jumpy, but I think we can read it pretty well there. The top temperature is the output. Hopefully I've got that wired right. Uh, we're going to pour some water in here. It's going to be close to freezing. We'll have a before and after temperature. Uh, yep. And then we'll hook up our little leads and see what this thing can do. I did come to this conclusion on the first experiment that perhaps having it horizontal meant that I wasn't actually draining all the air out of this tube. So I think this way we'll just have a tiny little pocket left at the top here and we'll see what kind of performance we can get here. Okay. Oh, wait, I totally, uh, I totally forgot. We're not quite ready to run this experiment. I got to get a scale underneath the bucket. And then I also need a timer just in case we end up doing some back calculation for how much water is actually coming out of here. Okay. Okay. I think we've got all our variables now. Hurt us a little bit here. I'm going to lower this camera angle just so I can get a little better view on those. So major mess up here. When I went to move the camera, I put my temperature displays out of the frame. I think the thing just rotated a little after I thought I was done moving it around. The take home from this experiment though is this is a 300 watt heating element. At about 12 ounces per minute, we're getting about a 20 degree temperature increase is what I can gather from the audio. Okay, so we've leveled off at about 20 degree difference there. Uh, it's about 12 ounces per minute, it's a cup and a half per minute. And since the temperature controller is not hooked up yet because the relay isn't wired in, I don't know what the shutoff time is to reach my target temperature. But we'll deal with that in the next experiment. Okay, it's time for the third iteration here. Um, a bunch of goodies showed up from MechMaster. Some copper pipe. We're going to be brazing on cement caps and trying to get everything to work together. I'd kind of like to keep the same general form where I've got you know, the uh, heating element going through here and then outlet over there. The end comes in here. Uh, the problem is though, I kind of searched far and wide for adapters that would work. You know, I wanted this size copper tubing. They have these end connectors that you can just solder on and then you do have a threaded end. But unfortunately I couldn't find it to actually reduce down to the one inch that I need. So when you think about this, you know, I did buy this adapter in case this is the route I have to go, but you know, this adapter threads on about like that. Then this one threads on, you know, I think I can get it in about this deep. If you look at that, you know, by the time we then have our port that comes in from the side, you know, we're going to be losing about a third of the length of this. Like if the water intake is about here and you know, I know hot water rises, we'll probably get some convection, but I'd like to have the water inlet as close to the base of this as possible, just to make sure that that water is passing the full length of this as possible. So the idea I kind of have is to actually just use these end caps um, for the smaller end. I'm actually going to drill holes out and then try to braze these uh, copper nuts on, which will hopefully work. Um, but the bigger ones, they're, you know, clearly oversized. So I'm not sure we may try to grind the edges off of this and try to see if I can actually braise it kind of into a pool of solder onto the inside here. Um, I thought about doing it on the outside, but with that curve, um, there's not, this is a little difficult to show on hand, but with that curve there, there's just not going to be a whole lot of overlap. So we're going to try to inset it first. Um, that's going to be a little bit of an art project, but hopefully that works out. 
so yeah, version 3.0. Oh yeah, and then after this is all done, the reason I wanted kind of a copper exterior is because I'd like to integrate this temperature controller. And I think with like the thermal conductivity of copper, I should be able to just kind of place that temperature sensor on the outside and it should do a good enough job of approximating the temperature of the water inside, you know, have a fast enough response to be effective. And then that way I can avoid having any like extra drilled holes in the end of this and worrying about like where that sensor is positioned inside. As well, I think it's like a safety thing. If this was to somehow stay on, you know, I think with the plastic, eventually it could get hot enough that you'll start to deform the PVC, while the copper, I think, will be just fine. Um, something else I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, I also sourced a temperature controlling relay uh, straight out of China. That's the only place I could find it. That's rated for 30 amps. So to make this version work, I'm going to be using this temperature controller that will then fire an external relay because this is only rated to 10 amps but I'm pretty excited to see that 30 amp product come in and see if it can actually handle this. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. I'm getting a little rust on this heating element and that is a concern. Not quite sure why that's happening, but it's supposed to be stainless steel and looks like it. All right, so minus having a massive amount of cleaning to do. I think that this thing is pretty close here. We've got uh, somewhere between two and three threads. Um, so, you know, do what you're comfortable with. Again, my van water system is not pressurized using a foot pump. So I think this will seal up okay, but if you do run pressure in yours, be aware. Better get some of these burrs off. From the All right, so we're back at our experiment station here. Um, this is the PVC version. Kind of cool. Uh, you know, it actually turned out, I don't know, about a half, three eighths of an inch longer, but you know, same internal diameter essentially, but copper's just thinner than this PVC, so quite a bit more sleek. So a couple of things we're gonna do now is, you know, put the fittings back on it so we can actually run water through it. Then I did create this insulation sleeve so I can essentially uh, insulate this thing. I'll have to cut a little notch so we can get this fitting in and such, but uh, keep it warm. And then actually on our temperature controller here, which I've gone ahead and tried to program to essentially turn off at 100 degrees, we're just gonna go ahead and maybe like tape that down about there before we slide that insulation over um, yep, and then I've got a little end cut I cut out here that hopefully will slide over a little crude looking, but uh, yep, so we're gonna do that now. Hmm. That seal is, if you wanna tighten it down, it gets pushed out, which isn't too surprising, but maybe a different gasket material would work better, but we'll cross that if we need to. Okay. Oh fuck, this is a 3 8 inch fitting. Oh. All right, we're going on a little fitting hunt, so we'll be back. Okay, so we are lacking. I forgot that this is a half inch fitting and it's a little late right now to go to the store. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to thread this in here and then basically lather this with more plumbing tape and then just do a press fit for now, which 
uh, yeah, is as shoddy as it sounds, but I just kind of want to run this test. So you do what you got to do, I guess, or I do at least. I want to get this figured out, see if it's working. Okay, that is as dumb as can be, but hopefully that works out. Yeah, now we can put our little exit valve on. And I don't really know if we're gonna really benefit from this thing right now, but. Okay, so that's not holding on very well, but I think we are ready to tilt this back. Okay, we're back. Uh, after that, I had to get a little bit of nature's uh, painkiller there. Um, my water is a bit warmer today, and I was all excited to try to run this, and then I remembered, uh, oh yeah, I need a relay to actually fire this. Uh, yeah, I need a, I need a, um, yeah, I need a relay. So I got a wire in a relay right now. Check this out. Coveted by nerds everywhere, an authentic Radio Shack relay. Damn, I wonder how long this thing's been kicking around my shop. All right, so a quick overview of what's going on before we start here. Again, temperature at the start of the tube right here. Whoops, temperature on the input, temperature on the output on this top screen. And then this is actually the temperature controller. So it's set to 100 degrees. I think unfortunately the way it's wired, the second I hit the power button, it's just gonna go. This is filled with water. Oh, we gotta put our exit bucket here. Then we'll turn on our scale. Then we've also got a timer. Oh, we need this to zero out. Okay, so we've got scale that, that, and then that is just gonna have volts and amps. Then we've got a relay wired in, so this temperature controller should fire that relay. And in real time, I sort of Jink us this together super fast, so we'll know quickly if I've uh, screwed up some wiring I wasn't aware of. But uh, here we go. And then, all right. And so the temperature that the temperature sensor is seeing is this one. So we'll see if it starts to climb. I'm gonna guess a couple minutes is what it will take. Will we make it under two minutes? Oh, it's a race. Doesn't look like it. Oh, well, we might. So the relay has cut off now. Probably have a little bit of residual heat in that tube. Well, it's actually pretty good residual. We keep climbing pretty good. Killer. 108, that's pretty good. All right, so let's uh, start trickling a little water through. So yeah, I think we might conclude it. I do have a little bit of a water drip coming from this junction, unfortunately. Can we see that? Yeah, we have a little bit of a leak here. Yeah, so I'd say we're getting probably about six to eight ounces of water before we start to feel, you know, what is kind of like the real time heated water. It's pretty interesting to see this too, the hysteresis of both. So I don't know, perhaps a bigger tube would do a little better. Anyways, I got a lot of thoughts. I think this will be just a, a good size of copper to just try out for now. I mean, of course, lengthening it to like 18 inches uh, makes it a form factor you can kind of tuck in anywhere, but man, I am just rambling. Anyways, I got to get this leak fixed, so I'm gonna get a copper part tomorrow morning, resolder that, and then maybe actually. Okay, so we're back. Um, I think I was getting a little bit of a water leak out of this. Unfortunately, cutting those uh, threads into this double layer of copper just uh, did not pan out. So we're gonna be soldering in a different fitting here. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I gotta get a wrench for that, but 
I've got a few options. Um, this one's a little small, but you know, I just bought a few fittings, so we'll see what we end up doing. Uh, we can't have it protrude too far in. Uh, crap, I guess you can't see that. Um, we can't have it protrude too far in because then we'll be hitting the heating element. So I've got a few different things I picked up at the store um, and we'll see which one we like. Okay, so here's the finished product. Now that it's cooled down. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna put our parts back in this, our fittings, and then we might actually try to get this thing up to like 30 PSI and see if we got, can see any leaks. It's a little ugly in there. Man, I really should just get a flashlight to show that, but. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's strong enough. I guess we'll uh, maybe test that right now and just uh, put a wrench on it and see if we can kind of give it some moderate-ish pressure. Yeah, that's actually pretty good, cool. Uh, yeah, I guess if you're gonna really crank your fittings down, you might have an issue, but I'll be using nylon fittings in this, so, you know, at that point you just strip them out. Cool. Okay, so, we're gonna try to plug the hose in here and then we'll get some soapy water around all the fittings and see if we've got any leaks. We got this thing all ready for a pressure test. Um, we've got the air compressor at about 50 PSI. So I think we're just gonna do this kind of like, uh, you know, checking plumbing systems and such. Just got a little soapy water and we'll just take it kind of piece by piece. Hopefully uh, we have no bubbles. Again, in my van, this is running on a foot pump. So if you can withstand, I don't know, one PSI maybe from the amount of um, head pressure, we're good. But you know, here we're going to crank it. So hopefully we have no leaks. That would make me happy. Okay. So we've definitely got a leak along the heating element right there. See, then we'll flip it over this way. Yeah, you can just see it bubbling there. But everything else, not seeing any bubbles anywhere else. So let's try to tighten this a little bit and see if that fixed our issue. I ended up playing with a few things at this point, including, you know, tightening down the heating element, taking away the seal, uh, using more plumbing tape and everything, and nothing seemed to seal this. I am gonna end up fixing this with an O-ring and a little bit of touch-up work, but before that, since everything was assembled, I ran my last flow test. All right, so we're basically, um, you know, doing about a 50% duty cycle, like 50% run, 50% stop, like five seconds on, five seconds off. Uh, we're maintaining, I'm not sure, we're somewhere between 25 and 30 degree increase over ambient. Um, that's actually pretty good, I would say. I mean, I think the water in our van a lot of the time is about 40-ish degrees in the winter, somewhere like 35 to 45. And we've got frost protection, but it doesn't really get it warm. It just keeps the tubes from freezing. Um, so that's actually, you know, 
if when it's 35 degrees in the tank, uh, we could have, what is that, 60 degree water at the faucet. I mean, that would just be like way more pleasant. So I'm pretty happy with this design. I'm not sure if I'm gonna film it, but I'll end up either trying to source a local little O-ring uh, to keep this waterproof, make it watertight even under pressure. And then I think I'm gonna install that in the van. And I've got a, maybe about a five day kind of work trip coming up where I'll be using the van. So that will just be a fun little time to experiment with this. So. I think that's gonna be a wrap on it for now, so. Cool, crossing my fingers that it works as I'm hoping it does. So, dug up an O-ring in the uh, old junk bin. I have quite a few of them. Uh, so now we're gonna to try to reseal this and see if we can get a non-leaky connection. Yeah, so we've got some bubbling going on. Damn, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Hmm. Here we just have a larger flat zone here. It'll help out, so one sec. Now we have kind of a nice sanded surface. Hopefully that will help our ceiling. Let's just try no pipe tape. I mean, O-ring, I feel like the O-ring is what should be sealing. Got plenty of surface area for it now. But this is gonna bubble like a bitch. You can see it's pretty compressed in there. Yeah, that's a very nice squeeze. So, soapy time, and then bubble time. Oh, I think that's working. I'm not seeing any bubbles right now. Perfect. Sorry, I am. All right, that's great. Okay, so cool. Glad that that's sorting out and seems like sanding that surface to make sure it's nice and flat for that O-ring to register. Uh, seems to have taken care of our little air bubbling there. It arrived. Okay, so it's been a couple more weeks. I've been kind of cut off doing some other work, but these uh, temperature controllers have arrived. I'm actually quite happy with like how substantial they are. Um, you know, for a $10 Chinesium part, I kind of thought they'd be quite a bit smaller, but you know, they look actually, they might actually be able to handle 30 amps. So Hopefully, if these work well, I'm gonna to try to plug them in now and see if they get hot or anything. Um, but if they work well, I would hope to be able to order more of these. It seems like the perfect solution. So today's project is gonna be take one of these. Um, and then I've just got a little electrical box. So my plan is gonna to be to mount this inside here and kind of make it a nice, neat wiring system. And then actually install it in my van and run it for a few trips. So that's kind of the last piece of this puzzle. So first we'll test this and if it works well, we'll install it in the van. If it doesn't work well, then we'll retrofit something more ghetto looking into the van from the way we were controlling it before. Okay. Oh yeah, and I don't know if I showed this last time, it's been a little bit, but I made this uh, insulation thing, glued a little cap on. I think that looks quite nice. Well, looks as nice as I can for something utilitarian. All right, and then one last point. Um, so I had contacted the guys who make this, uh, the Nord, about some corrosion I was seeing on here, like some rust. And we exchanged a few emails. They said to wipe it off with a towel. That didn't work. They said to use some sandpaper if I could. And that did work. I was getting uh, some rust in one of these pockets, uh, oops, pockets down here and on the bar and where I sanded it off. Uh, it hasn't come back. I've like dunked it in the water bucket, pulled it out a couple times to dry it. So I guess if you buy one of these and you are seeing little rust spots, 
then I would just recommend uh, doing that, which is unfortunate you have to do that, but you know, again, straight out of China, what can you do? So that, that just makes me happier. I don't want rust in my water. And I think it was a surface contaminant, like they said. Even these temperature probes, uh, they feel pretty substantial. So that's a nice sign as well. So cool. You can see the temperature responding there. Now I got to find a manual, figure out how to program it and uh, what the red light means. So I guess we'll solve that now. The directions are a little cryptic, but Okay, so that's T1 and T2 are both set to that. So I think the things to do now is get this hot water heater installed in the tube. Okay, we're gonna actually install it in here. We'll plug this, we'll run the temperature probe down here. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, we went ahead and zoomed things in a little bit. We're gonna fire this up now. We'll hopefully watch this temperature climb and then at that uh, 37.8, it kicks off. We're at 37. All right, we just kicked off. Nothing alarming there. All right, we'll see. I wonder if this will just end up boiling this water eventually, but let's get our friendly stopwatch out okay we'll check back in about 10 minutes uh hopefully we don't just boil this water that would be kind of amusing now i think as we remembered i think it'd be a pretty unique scenario for me to run this for 10 minutes straight and you know likely it just kicks on for a couple minutes heats the water kicks off but you know it is uh see what we're up to on temperature wise here oh yeah we're definitely climbing yeah pushing over 100 125 okay we're coming up on 10 minutes here we've been refilling our little container here um, let's see in terms of temperature We're at showing uh, 125, 130 on the front here. 36, I think I saw that for a sec there. Then on the back. Now we're pushing 150. I think it is those signatures. Um, the actual back of the circuit board is not the scuttering or anything. Okay, so I think I think I'm going to be okay running this thing. I'm going to just go for it. Um, that's, I, that's funny. One of the parts of the screen already doesn't work. I think it's supposed to say 93.3. So not, um, not blown away by the quality, I guess, you know, but I think it should be okay. We're going to, we're going to go with it. All right. And in an earlier iteration, I said I wanted this thing made out of copper. I thought it was a good safety practice. So you can see here, you know, just like 10 minutes of uh, boiling water in this PVC, and it did have a spring clamp on it. But you can see uh, how much that has deformed. So yeah, PVC with hot water, in my experience, you know, the copper won't deform. This would just happen like if the temperature controller uh, misfired and it just started to boil all that water off in there. This is what I want to avoid is just having this thing melt. So, all right. It sounds like the temperatures I'm seeing here are not alarming. So I'm going to just go ahead and trust this. And then on, I think I would say at this point, if I would, had planned to implement this in my van, I would have tried to run some 12 gauge, but it sounds like uh, 14 gauge is fine. The jacket on this is 105 degrees centigrade. So I think we're going to be okay, especially with kind of the intermittent use I'm going to be doing. So on to, finishing up the assembly into the box and then we'll get it in the van. So I'm gonna assume that the uh, circuit board works, little circuit board thingy. So we'll draw the circuit board here. Then we've got our 
heating element. Um, and then I'm gonna wanna switch. Uh, we'll just draw it as a little circle because it's the kind of switch I'm using with a little dot. I think that's the switch I'll end up using. Might be different. Anyways, so you're gonna need the main power uh, for this thing and that's controlled by that relay. So we'll have the positive come in uh, to the common port on the circuit board and then is gonna come out, power this thing. For this circuit board, uh, the, I want the switch to actually control the circuit board so there's not 30 amps running through this switch. It's just whatever the 10th of a amp that this circuit needs. So the positive is gonna come up to this and then go into those side power ports. Uh, so that's actually all the positive runs we have, unless I'm brain farting. Then this circuit board also needs a negative, so that's gonna run up to here. Uh, this for the LED to work also needs a negative. So he's got three prongs on the back, one's for the LED to have a ground. And then we need a major, uh, this is a real artwork. Then we need a negative to that too. So essentially this needs to be the thicker gauge. So I'm gonna write 14 gauge next to this. This needs to be 14 gauge. Um, and then this needs to be 14 gauge. The actual wire is going to this switch and to the circuit board on the, to power it. Can be, you know, anything thin you have. I think I've got some nice 20 gauge or something I'll use for those tiny little runs there. So that is the most crude wiring diagram possible. It looks kind of like a headless robot or something. Hmm. So there's a lot of shit in this box. Uh, damn, that sucks. All right, I think I have to go find a different box. I could chop this into pieces, but then I don't think I can, I can't attach this front plate then. Okay, off to the store. Okay, so we're in the van. Uh, last night, got the heater installed in this little cubby here. Um, but now I've decided to revamp my wiring. I kind of slept on it and decided I wanted to make a couple changes. Uh, one random tip, if you're still watching this, uh, these little like Velcro ties that they sell for like wire bundles, I actually think are really good for like, you know, I had some black ones when I originally installed this, um, like all along the bottom here. You can see there's a bunch of black ones and now I've got some gray ones I found in the shop, but I think they're a really good way to secure any kind of like plumbing insulation. This way, if you need to look at it, it's, you know, removable and reusable, like on the road, it's pretty easy versus like any kind of tape or zip ties or a pain. So there you go. But Anyways, I've decided to revamp my wiring, so I'm in the middle of deconstructing this box. I don't really want to have to take all those hose clamps and such apart, so I'm just gonna pull the wire out of here, and we're gonna make a couple changes. So I've just decided to revamp some things, and now the way this will work is when we wanna run the water heater, we'll flip this on. We'll have a second switch up here on the countertop, which basically means like, oh, we're gonna wash dishes. You click that on right here, we'll run the water heater, um, and then there'll be a kill switch on the box that just cuts power to the uh, 30 amp line so that we don't have to deal. Essentially, this switch will power the relay on the circuit board, but this will cut the power to the heating element. So if say something happens and that relay just doesn't want to turn off, I can cut the 30 amps coming in and then that way I'm not dealing with something weird. So that's the current plan. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's why we're rewiring. All right, so yesterday I filmed this or laid this out, wired it into this box, which I've now gutted again. And I'm actually gonna maybe try to find a slightly bigger box. I don't know, it, it seems like you either get this size box or you get something way bigger at the local hardware stores and I'm sort of over waiting for things to be delivered. But anyways, this system has, um, I would say it kind of feels like complete faith in this controller, which is a quality Chinese part. I actually just noticed this, look, it's even labeled Chinzy, Chins. So anyways, I do like the function that this thing claims, but I'm just a little skeptical about its reliability. So I decided to rewire this after sleeping on it for a little more, uh, there's just a couple more little things so I can just shut this thing off in case something goes wrong. What is the word I'm looking for? Redundancy, it has redundant features built into it. So we have a positive and a negative. Uh, then we've got our controller. Uh, that has a common port. 
and then has the normally open port. There's also a normally closed, we're not using that. Then we need the positive and the negative from here. We have the temperature probe, which we're not showing, which basically the controller uses, and then we have our heating element, right? So, um, and then all of this is in a little case, right? So, so here's the new system I came up with. I think I probably mentioned this, but it's coming off the same circuit as my uh, amp research power step. So that comes up and I'm gonna replace it with a, what is a double position single throw switch. So you can either be going to the step or it can be going to power this. Now, this is actually gonna be used as the power for my kind of the relay here, the controller, not the actual 30 amp relay. The uh, switches I'm using here are only rated to 10 amps, so I can't just power the whole thing through it. So this is gonna come out, and it's actually gonna come up to another switch that's up on my countertop, and then it's gonna come over to the plus side. Uh, this way, you know, the switch that's basically switching between the step off or the water heater is just powering kind of the brains of it. Now, before we get to this switch, I'm gonna branch off of this and have this come up to the common port. However, if something fries about this relay with the common and the normally open, I don't want it to just continue getting this power. Sure, I could pull the fuse, but what's easier here is I'm actually gonna have a switch on the outside of this box that basically controls whether or not I'm getting power through this common port. So in the worst case scenario that the relay is just like fried and continuing to get power, the brains are busted, um, I can essentially kill this, uh, I can kill the brains from this uh, you know, three position switch or I can kill the 30 amp that's going to the common port. So basically I can shut off both ends of the circuit board manually without, in case something goes wrong. Anyways, from there, obviously this goes to the uh, heating unit. You know, this is gonna come out. Um, we're gonna go to our negative here, and then we're also gonna somewhere, let's see what's the easiest way to route this. We're gonna go through the ground on the heating element. But then I thought of one more great thing, which is this switch on my countertop is illuminated, but I'd kind of just for myself like to maybe have a second indicator of when the heater is actually on so I can see how it's cycling on and off. And if the light's just on for a long time, I can maybe notice that's an issue. So off of this side here, I've decided to run essentially buy a little mini 12 volt LED um, that will then be on the countertop here. So when, oops, wrong color. So when the heater unit is on, the normally open port has power, this will kick on, so I'm indicating to me the heater is on, uh, even though, like when this is, when the heating element's actually cycled on, even when the water heater is on, because it cycles on and off quite a bit. So there's the new wiring diagram, uh, as convoluted as possible. Sorry, not my forte. Uh, see, here's the box I was using. I went to the store and found uh, this box. It's just slightly bigger. So I think this is actually gonna be a way better fit for the circuit board. I'm gonna be able to put it in here and not have all those cockeyed fittings. So this is a Home Depot product. And then they also sell these, which I've used quite a bit. And they're, uh, sometimes you gotta bore them out a little bit because they really compress down. But so I think I'm gonna end up having two wire runs, essentially all the ends. Uh, Two or three. Anyways, I think this will work better. I feel like the last like 10 of these updates I've given, essentially nothing has changed except me continuing to second guess and refine. So that's what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mount stuff into this box. Well, just finished uh, the rough install. Still gotta like put this electrical panel back and such, but basically, so on the countertop here, we've got a switch and a little light. This is kind of a fugly switch style, but uh, I, I think it's supposed to be water resistant, you know, so having it so close to the sink, the prettier switch I had, I don't know if it would have really gotten splashed all that much, but anyways, that's there. The LED should blink. Anyways, then here I swapped out what used to be just the single position to a double position switch. Uh, maybe double throw, god damn. I gotta start sleeping more. Um, so now if it's turned one way, the step is on. If it's in the middle, everything's off, and if it's up, then uh, the water heater should be running. Um, then we'll put a fuse in there shortly, but for now, just to show you what's going on in the cabinet, that's the entire heater right there. 
Um, so this used to be skinny tubing like this, but now it comes in, the heating elements in here, and it pumps out. This way I can still get my recycling bin in there, drain line from the faucet, and then there's kind of the control box with the uh, 30 amp line on off. And you can see the circuit board there. Um, and I've got a clear cover that I'll put on it, but uh, basically by having all the wiring connections exposed at this point, once we fire it up and we start testing it, I like to just feel and make sure nothing's getting super hot because that's usually an indication that something's not quite right. So we'll put the fuse in, then uh, we'll go from there. So here we go. And I think that's about all I've got to share about kind of the whole process about how this water heater came together. After the install, I did take a quick time lapse just to see essentially how long or how often the heating element would cycle back on to maintain temperature. And it seems like for about every 10 minutes, it cycles on about 30 seconds just to kind of stay at that like 100 degree cutoff for the relay. Besides that, the other video has more streamlined directions how to actually make what I consider to be the finished product of this video. This one just kind of shows the, you know, the speed bumps along the way. Uh, thanks you guys so much for watching. I know this isn't kind of like my standard video format, but you know, hopefully you learned something and I just had so much footage about this whole process that I just wanted to share it. Thank you.